what if I told you that literally 90% of the way that people build websites is completely backwards? And the process that most people follow means that it takes them months to launch their website and hours for simple edits and changes. It sounds kind of crazy, but I've been doing one-on-one -on -one calls with beginner designers and the process that they follow is literally exactly backwards. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what most people do, why it's so slow, the simple way to fix it, and my exact step-by-step -step process for designing websites 10 times faster. If you're new here, welcome back to DesignSpo. I'm George, and this is a new series called Web Design 101. Recently, I sat down with people from my web design community and helped them solve their most difficult problems in one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. And what I discovered was that most people I talked to assumed design was some like innate talent that could never be learned. But good design really just comes down to knowing a few key principles. So in this series, I'm gonna teach these principles to you in a simple and actionable way. Whether you're a business owner that wants to build your own website or an amateur designer looking to level up their skills, this series is designed for you. Now back to the problem at hand. Why does it take most people so long to launch their website? It was a question I genuinely had because in these interviews, people were saying it would take them six months to a year to build a simple five page small business website. And if we're being you know, totally honest, if we include time spent procrastinating, it's probably actually a lot longer than that. So to answer this question, I had to find out what people were actually doing. I asked them to walk me through their process, and then I summarized all these conversations into a general framework that most people follow, which causes their development time to take forever. Now I'm about to share it with you, but if this process sounds familiar at all, I just wanna reassure you that there's a much better way, and that by the end of this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what it is. So here's the beginner process in a nutshell. Step one, most people start with some basic research. They look up top website builders of 2025 or best tools to make a website, and they pick the one that looks the easiest to use. That usually means Squarespace, Wix, or WordPress. None of which are bad tools, by the way, but if they picked out the easiest tools to use, then why does it take them so long to build a website? Well, it's because step two of their process is development. Every single conversation I had went exactly the same way. They picked out a tool and started building their website. They developed sections one after another whenever they had the time, and if they made a mistake, they'd redevelop it. Now, the weird thing is, if you're not a web developer, this sounds totally reasonable. You pick a tool and you start building. After all, just do it is a mantra we've been hearing our entire lives. So why are these go-getters getting stuck? Well, as a web designer, to me, it seems kind of obvious. They're starting with the most time-consuming and difficult part of building a website. So the first problem with this approach is that it takes a long time to even build a single website section from scratch. And for most business owners that only have a few hours a week of free time, if that, to work on marketing, building a website is usually their last priority. You might have to juggle social media with print advertising, paid ads, and not to mention actually running a business, right? So many business owners end up leaving their website to sit for a long time. When they have a few hours, they might try to tinker around and maybe build one or two sections of their websites, but usually they don't make a ton of progress. And that's because if you follow this approach, you'll need to make a lot of edits. Most people just can't visualize what their website is gonna look like before they see it. So I've had conversations with people where they fully develop many versions of a section, page, or even entire website that will never be published. And these two problems, one, that it takes a long time to develop sections from scratch, and two, that you'll need to edit them a lot, leads to procrastination and frustration. When certain tasks are straightforward to do and obviously helpful to our business, we end up working really hard at them, right? But we'll naturally procrastinate on the tasks that are confusing, difficult, and may not seem to help our business grow for many months. That's how most people feel about building their website. And it's at this point that they either give up or hire somebody to do it for them. But it doesn't have to be this way. These business owners are usually smart, very capable people, but the only reason that it's taking them so long to build a website is because they're working on it completely backwards. So to show you the right way to build a website, I wanna use an analogy. Imagine you're building a house. You wouldn't just start laying brick, right? If you try to build before you've done the proper planning, your house is gonna collapse almost immediately. You don't get to just wing big construction projects. Now, if you build a website before planning, it's not going to collapse on you, but it will eat up months of your time and you'll have nothing to show for it. So just like building a house, the last step of building your website is always development. Now, instead of starting with something super concrete, like developing a live website, what if we started with something super abstract instead? If we started with something abstract, like a basic plan or a quick sketch, we could figure out what's working and what's not much faster. 
That's because the more abstract we start, the easier it is to change. An idea is easier to change than an outline. An outline is easier to change than a live website. You see, for some reason, a lot of people avoid planning because they believe it's the opposite of action. But for large projects, the opposite is true. Planning enables action. If we don't know what we're doing, we'll be paralyzed because we don't know how to make progress. But if we start by planning and move progressively from more abstract to more concrete steps, we'll know exactly what to do at every step of the way. Plus, if we want to change something, it's much easier to do that in the planning phase than it is the development phase. So now that we know why most people build websites backwards and how we should approach web design instead, I want to share with you my exact web design process that I use with all my design clients. The first step, and also the most abstract, is setting goals. You might already have a vague idea about what you want out of your website, like you might want to use it to grow your business, but I encourage you to spend time thinking about each and every specific goal you want your website to reach, not just the obvious ones. For example, you might want to have information about your business. You might want to focus on some specific product or service. You might want to make it user friendly, or you might want to focus on some specific promotion. Whatever your goals are, you want to write them down and get as specific as possible. And this is not some, you know, hippy dippy mystical process either. I don't want you to write your goals down so that we can manifest them. We're going to turn each and every one of these goals into sections and pages on our website. So if you want it on your website, write it down now, because I know from personal experience, writing your goals now will save you dozens of hours in development time later. Step two is building your sitemap. Now, if you've never heard of a sitemap before, it's simply a list of the pages you want and the sections on those pages. To build a sitemap, you can use something as simple as Google Docs or your favorite word processor and just start typing out the pages or sections that you want. But they also make tools like Octopus or Reloom that make visualizing your sitemap a little easier. So we're simply going to turn each goal into pages and sections on our sitemap. Let's go ahead and start with the homepage. One of my goals, let's say, is to be user friendly. So the first section I might want to add is a nice size menu with navigation to every page on my website. Two other goals I had were speaking directly to my target audience and to show them a little bit about my product. So on my main section called a hero section, I might have a headline on the left and a demo on the right. Now are these sections, you know, groundbreaking? No, of course not. You might have built these sections without any planning at all. But the chance you build every section exactly as it should be without any planning is zero. And a little bit of planning means you're not developing sections by accident anymore. You know why you're making your choices, which means you'll know if the design is working or not. So you want to go through this process of turning every goal into pages and sections until we've built our sitemap. If you find your sitemap is looking too empty or too full, that's actually, you know, good news. It would be a lot worse to find out we added way too much or way too little if we skipped right to development. Luckily, you decided to plan, we're still in the sitemap phase, and we can add or remove goals and their corresponding sections until we're happy with the sitemap. The next step is to turn that sitemap into a wireframe. A wireframe is just a basic visualization of your sitemap. You can either sketch it out on a few pieces of paper or use a dedicated design tool like Figma. We'll talk more about why using Figma is so powerful in the next section, but for now, all you need to know is that it's free and you'll probably want to use it at some point. Now, the key thing about a wireframe is that it should be simple. Don't worry if you can't draw. The only thing you'll be asked to draw is a square and it doesn't even have to be a perfect square. But if you don't feel comfortable drawing at all, you can use Figma to create wireframes in just a few clicks. Let's take the sitemap of our first section we described earlier and make it using Figma. We'll start by drawing a box that represents our section. On top of that, we'll draw a gray box for our logo and menu. And I'm literally just going to select my text tool and write logo and menu. On the left, I'll draw another box for our headline. Then underneath that, I'll add in another one for a subtitle. And finally, a third for our button. On the right, I'll draw a big box for our product demo. And that's it, that's my wireframe done for these sections. So if you have a hard time visualizing the structure of a website, or if someone else is going to actually develop it, then wireframing is an insanely powerful step in this process. In just a few minutes, you get a sense of how your section is going to look. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process for every single page and section on our website. Now, after we wireframe, the next step is to design it. And because this is a beginner series, I wanna remind you that web design and web development are two completely different things. Designing a website means to create a high fidelity or good looking mock-up of the website. That's what we're focused on here. The design isn't meant to be functional. It's not gonna be a live website. It's simply making yourself a preview of what your website will look like. 
So this is why Figma is such an important tool to learn because you can build your wireframe and design right inside the same tool. So how do we go about turning our wireframe into a fully designed mockup that actually looks good? Well, to do that, we need to build a design system. A design system is simply a set of choices we make about our website and a set of rules we decide to follow so that design becomes easier. The complexity here can range from really basic design systems to really detailed ones created by some big companies. Now, unfortunately, there's not enough time even in a 10 hour YouTube video to cover all the details of building a world class design system. That's why this series Web Design 101 is going to tackle specific aspects of design in future videos, but this video is just about my process as a designer. But I will give you two ways you can get started right now. If you want an insanely simple design system, just pick out a legible font that you like and a few colors. From there, you can use typescale.com to build out your typography sizes and uicolors.app to build your color system. The other option is that you can join the Design Spo newsletter and get five free website case studies sent to your inbox every week, where I break down the design choices made by the best websites on the internet. I created Design Spo as a resource because there are so many design inspiration websites, but they don't actually explain what makes a design choice effective. So not only do you get to see great websites every week, but you also get a short explanation of what makes each one of them good. If you want to sign up, it's the first link in the description below. But either way, once you've selected the basic rules for your typography, color, spacing, etc., you want to stick to them. Paragraphs should be the same size everywhere. Buy now buttons should be the same color everywhere. That way, even if you made a lot of strange choices, your website is going to look clean and consistent at all times. So now all you have to do to design your website is map your design system onto your wireframe. And once you've done that, the final step is development. And now we've looped around again to where most people actually start. In fact, when most people talk about web design, this is usually actually what they're thinking of. And because this step is the most familiar to most people, I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step development tutorial. I want to make this video to be tool agnostic. You can use Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, Webflow, Framer. I'm not going to tell you that it's the wrong choice. All I want to drive home is that when you're building a website, you shouldn't jump straight into development. This is not a tutorial telling you what plugins to buy or what buttons to click. This is simply an explanation of my process and why it allows me to develop websites faster. I actually recently built a real estate website in under a week as a rush order for a client because I followed this exact process. So to summarize, start with the most abstract thing you can think of, which will also be the easiest to change. And me personally, I always start with goals. Then step two, get more and more concrete until you can visualize exactly what you're building. Again, me personally, I do a sitemap, then wireframe, then a design system, then a design, and then finally a live website. Finally, third, this process is tool agnostic. Some people wireframe with a pen and paper, others use design tools. Some people love to design in Figma, other people love to use Sketch. And you don't have to get a super fancy development tool that costs a ton of money just because you watched a video about it. Pick out a tool that you will actually use and follow a process so that you can avoid frustration and procrastination. Remember, even a few hours of planning will save you hundreds of hours of development time. Now, if you want to learn even more about design, you can check out these videos here. And if you want to get design inspiration sent to your inbox every week, sign up for the Design Spell newsletter in the description below. But that's all for me today. I can't wait to see you in the next one.